So let's create. So yesterday, what we have seen, we have seen something like, uh, what is a, how do we install Java? So to simply to put into a perspective, so Java will have this particular thing, JVM, where our actual code will be executing. So we we also have something called JRE, Java Runtime Environment. What is Java Runtime Environment, which will allow all the written code means byte code or dot class files will be executed in this particular jre so jre is the main purpose of jre is java runtime environment any code which has been compiled can be executed on jre but if user wants to develop something so hey i'm not interested to execute suppose i want to develop something so we have jdk jdk is nothing but so the jdk will have both jre jvm okay the jdk is like above all so jdk will contain everything okay currently we are learning java 1 dot sorry java 21 the version we are learning is the latest version which So the command to change java iphone version so 21.0.1 is the version we are using so the jdk currently what we are running is java 21.0.1 so that is the jdk jdk consists of java runtime environment java virtual machine okay and using jdk we can write the code and we can also do what we can compile it it will execute it you can write auto come so you will compile in the J, jdk will help you to compile okay here we are using ide so jdk does all that for us so write a code compile a code then we will provide the compiled code to jre to execution so this particular ide intellij has all of those features with us so yesterday we have seen some basic programs and data types now we will come back to So let me create a new program, new Java class. So this program name, so the file, so like I mentioned, this particular file name should match with the class name. The, the, the syntax looks like the simple guys, always remember. For now, there should be at least one public class that is condition we have and with within this file we have one uh, class that de to define a class okay to define a class we will write something called public then class this is the syntax which means you are going to define something class like how we will define int then i like that you are going to define class and class name okay within this class we will create a main method main method syntax looks like this public always this will remain same this is the class scope within class we are writing one main method public static void main string arguments it is just going to take as a parameter so what we are going to see we are going to see something like how how we did yesterday we were checking how to write if else so that that is going to be our program now if else we will see if else so i'm uh, write a program write a program so write a program So this is a simple program we are going to write. So gender, I am saving it as care gender. Gender is equals to, for now, let me save it as 
m so if if it is m what type of gender it is it is male so if i save it as f so it is understood it is female okay so for now let's write a simple program to check whether this given gender we are going to write some conditions okay so if gender so what i've said within if we have to provide condition condition should be boolean here we are going to provide boolean condition boolean means true or false condition only when the condition is met true i mean the condition becomes true if condition if block will be executed if condition is not met else scenario will be executed so here okay here we are going to give the condition so the syntax looks like this if open bracket then so here first we are going to give this particular brackets within this we are going to mention the com uh, condition so the condition is care so whenever the gender equals to m i'm going to print it as male whenever the gender is equals to f i'm going to print it as female okay so gender so when i when you are doing comparison you will be using double equals when you are doing a comparison you are going to use double equals so now let me write a print statement the print statement anyone remember so the print statements looks like system dot out dot println system dot out dot so always this will be the statement to print something print ln so what i'm going to do if the gender is equals to m i'm going to print something i'm just going to print male okay let's say if it is not male there is only possible two outcomes okay for now there is only possibility of two outcomes female so if this condition is not met then we are going to call it as female so let's run it save this so i have given m in the gender so what happened we have got the output as mail you can write, write anything meaningful uh, so for now it is understood if block has been executed else part is not executed that is why we are not seeing an output for us to execute the else part we have to provide some data like this when we run this let's see now the else part will execute female so the syntax you have to remember so the if condition syntax looks something like this if provide some condition true or false something then when it is true what should happen that code will come within this particular flower brackets then if this condition is not satisfied we have to write something called else block within else block we have to write some statements some statement if the condition is not matched what we are going to perform this this looks our this is our syntax if if at all this condition matches okay so both will not execute okay remember both will not execute after executing if block the code will not execute the else block in same run it is not possible okay first time what i have done i have kept it as female then i have executed it okay second time what i have done i have kept it as m and then i have executed it okay out of these two only one condition will execute and based on the uh, this particular okay any one is only going to get executed okay so once if gets executed else block is not going to execute at all okay once if block condition fails means fails to satisfy the condition then else part will execute so th this is the simple syntax for if else so let's say 
recently we have introduced one more gender let's say one more gender so now i'm giving t so recently we have approved something called transgender so now is this the expected outcome no we are expecting it to be a transgender but we have not provided any condition now we have to change our program how do we do that not only if we also can use else if there is one more condition we have which is called else if gender equals equals f So remember, guys. First, what happens if block? It will check for the condition. Whenever we are going to do, let me save this. Okay, let me debug this and show you how it is going to work. First, I am just printing what is the given input. That is all I am doing in this particular line. And given input is I am trying to print what input the user has given. And I am looking for an expected output. OK. Here, the given input is T. What is the output we have got? Trans. So we, we will check how this if and else is working. We will see it in a debug board. OK. So now what happens? always the execution flow starts from main method in this particular condition class we have one main method within that main method we have some code okay in this particular case we have uh, defined a gender variable of data type character then we are assigning some value in this case t has been assigned what happens gender is representing some memory address holding this particular value okay then what is happening we are trying to print it so here in this print statement what we are trying to do we are trying to do club something we, we call it as concat okay we are trying to print so you all know how we can print okay within double quotes if you write anything you are going to print if you write plus it will combine those two and you will see this particular output so the given input is then your so this particular thing will concatenate nothing but it will just sit next to that that's it so if i don't give any gender this t will not be printed okay this particular thing is hard coded and this gender value is coming from this above line so i am just printed it coming back to our conditions how it is going to work now like i mentioned first it will check the if condition Is T equals to equals to M true or false? T is equals to equals to M. No, it is false. So now it is again checking T equals to equals to F. So what happens when I run it? So because it is not matched, it has come to else block now t equals to equals to false sorry t equals to equals to f no t can be equals to equals to t alone okay when this both conditions are not met when this both conditions are not met what will happen <clears throat> by default this else block will execute whenever the if condition or else if condition is not matched it will by default execute this else block because here we have not mentioned anything we simply have told the compiler so the program so whenever these both conditions are not met you have to execute this particular condition 
so what ha what is happening so that is why we are seeing this particular output as trans so then main method execution is completed then the java program ends so suppose now i want to execute this particular line what input i am supposed to provide i'm supposed to provide f so now let's see for f is it printing female let me run it so now let see it is executing <clears throat> suppose if the, the, there comes more we can write multiple if else okay so sorry else ifs so let's say tomorrow one more gender got added approved and added so if you want you can add one more this thing condition so if gender equals to equals to something else we don't know what it is for now let's say for anything it can be anything one let's say they have added one more gender category we don't know what it is so that you can add one more condition here by default none of them matches so you can also mention no gender matched no gender matched okay let me do it this way so we can write this way suppose when i write this suppose um, let me put some incorrect gender now q is something not currently we know only three genders so we have seen so the given input is q no gender is matched okay it says hey there is no gender matching so when it checked in this particular condition this particular thing is not matched m q equals to m false this is not executed q is equals to f false not executed q is equals to t not executed none of them got executed and it is left with only one choice else block got executed so this is the syntax for if and else and also we can add multiple else if conditions this is how we are going to do so we will write one more simple program to check the age to check the age where if take input as an age and verify whether that person is eligible to vote or not we will write one more java class so what eligibility so in this class we are going to write a simple program to check whether the user has eligibility to vote or not okay so what i'm going to do i will create a main method so i i want to know the name string name name will have multiple characters so so i'm giving it a stream so let me take example so suresh so i want to check this particular person has eligibility to vote or not so what is the other parameter i need int age so i want to know age age i am saving in integer type of date integer data type okay so let's say eligible his age is 19 currently so let me write a java program how can we write a java program so what is the voter vote eligibility age you know 18 so if the age greater than 18 or equals to a okay or equals to 18 then let me let me print eligible to vote i am also going to write something else part so if he is not eligible 
so i have to mention that he is not eligible so that comes here Okay, so it is executing the previous class itself. Let me run this. So here, if you see, we have two, two inputs taken. One is name and second one is age. Now we want to check whether this particular user is eligible to vote or not. So. For a citizen to vote, we are just checking whether the age of the citizen should be equals to or greater than 18. Only then he will be able to vote. So for now, we have given a condition age greater than or equals to. So th this will always remain same, the operators which we have talking about. So we have this greater than, less than or equals to everything. So here greater than or equals to okay here uh, if not met i'm just going to write the else part so now when i run it so we have got so 19 years is is the uh, right age for the person to vote now i want my output not just showing eligible to vote i want the name of the voter to be printed name of the voter to be printed how can i do that name of the voter is saved in which variable name of the voter is saved in this particular this name variable name variable it holds the voter name so i just want to use it so what i should do is name plus okay if I do this, So we, we are using this other parameter name. So what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to print meaningful. How I'm trying to concat, I'm just trying name plus what happens? It will concat with this particular, this thing, other string. This is one string. This will get concatenated to this particular other string. Two strings will be clubbed and output will be printed here. So Suresh eligible to vote. Okay, we can add grammar. This one. Okay, so now we got an. Uh, we know how how to concatenate, but I want to do one more thing. So, so this is my constitution. I will say, hey, people above. 60 can't vote he is also not eligible okay so how do i write a program for that so how can we write a program so we have one more condition earlier we have said who who is above 18 can vote okay who is less than uh, 18 can't vote that is all condition we have okay now i am adding one more condition age greater than 60 can't vote okay so what i should do is i will be adding one more condition if age age greater than uh, above i've said just above 80 so we will consider it as age greater than 60 not equals to so greater than 60 i have to write my condition so this is not else so it it is else if okay okay 
Okay, we are writing one more else if. So this scenario is working fine. This condition is working fine. We will check anything age less than 18. So less than 18 is 15. We will try when I run it for 15. So Suresh is not eligible to vote. Let's change the Suresh age to 61. And let's see whether he is able to. OK, now if you see something is wrong. What is happening? Okay, so it says Suresh is eligible to vote. Why is this happening? Any clue? What is happening here? 61 is greater than 18 or not? 61 is greater than 18 or not? 61 is greater than 18. So whenever this condition is getting executed, what is happening? This particular thing is going, going and executed. So that is why it is not reaching this particular block. So instead of writing else if in this scenario, you should be writing one more condition. So here, this may not be required now. So here, if you see, here age greater than or equals to 18 and age greater than or equals to 6. Age, so, sorry, age greater than, okay. So now if you see, what did I do? In an if, I have added multiple conditions. Earlier, we have just mentioned age greater than or equals to 18. Now I have added one more condition. People above 60 can't vote. So the person should who is voting should be greater than 18 and less than 60. Or you, you can write it this way less than 60 greater than or equals to 18 less than 60 so less than or equals to 60 60 age can also uh, vote 18 years also can vote that is why i have given uh, age greater than or equals to 18 and less than or equals to 60 this this would be ideal so let me run it. Now, ideally, this person is not eligible to vote. So this is not eligible to vote. But I just want to know, is he not eligible because of his age greater than 60 or is he not eligible because his age less than 18? So you know he's not eligible. But I just want to further know whether he is not eligible because he is older or because he is younger. So those things, it is not understandable, right? So for that, we will write something. We will. Also mention the reason for not eligible. he can be old or he can be too young to vote okay these are the possible outcomes now i'm just mentioning hey 
is not just he is not eligible but i am not clearly mentioned what is the reason okay so we will write using this else if condition so here if i'll write one more condition okay if age falls between 18 and 60 yes he is eligible to vote if age less than 18 okay if age greater than 60 i have already written if age greater than 60 he is more than 60 years hence he is not eligible to vote so what will be the one more condition left 0 to 18 will be left okay 0 to 18 will be left so it will be covered in the else block so he is not eligible to vote as he is too young so let's run it and check so now let me give his age as 12 let me run it so let us run it in the debug mode what is the age of suresh suresh is 12 years old so we will check whether this condition is matching or not okay so age greater than or equals to 18 false now age less than or equals to age less than or equals to 60 true but uh, greater than or equals to 18 failed okay so when and is provided both the conditions should satisfy this condition failed and this condition succeeded when both the conditions satisfy only then this if condition will execute okay because we have provided not one condition guys we have provided two condition condition one and condition two these two conditions are not su successful his age is less than 60 but not greater than uh, 18 so that is why this condition failed so now what happens it will go to else if block in else if block what are we checking age greater than 60 it is hey it is 12 so this condition also will not match now we come to the final block so now it says hey is not eligible because as he is too young to vote so we'll check one more condition we will check whether 21 let's run 21 should be able to vote okay let me give an two old 99 more than 60 hence not eligible to vote okay so this is how we are going to write a program so we have to understand the requirement first based on that we are going to write the conditions here any doubts you have okay i'll take it as no so let Sir, me... we have to write args what is the meaning of args huh args is nothing but arguments means it will get some bad so like you know what is the name tell me first of all what is the name here it is a variable is... name okay variable name of data type string okay similarly args is also type of this is nothing this particular this thing means it is an array okay for now i have not told you about array mm -hmm. arcs means something of type string okay it is not one string this particular square bracket means array of strings means not just one string this arcs yeah. will hold multiple strings as an input okay that is what oh. it means okay this method can take this this many number of string a multiple array of strings the main method will take that as an input for now and default it is defined not by us so it is already a predefined method so java has been taught to look for this method first for execution arcs is nothing but the variable name and it is a not it's a type string array here name is just of yeah, type string so uh, now it is a string even if it's not string 
uh, something uh, means carrot. At the time also we have to use arcs. No, arcs are not. Uh, no, no. Uh, arcs is the variable name. Okay. Even if so, string can hold even uh, this thing. Uh, string can hold character also. So here within string we can save one character also. That is allowed. String can also save numbers like 99. So string is universal. That is why they have chosen it. So string can save decimals also. So string is like universal. So they just thought that would be the right uh, data choice. So that is what they have used here. So we will, you will see later maybe uh, why they have used that. How do we use this particular thing? Maybe once after you completing this means uh, arrays topic, you will understand why it has been used that way. Okay. Sir. okay. So for now, public, static, void, main. So everything has some meaning here. Public has some meaning. Static has some meaning. Void has a meaning. This is the method name. And this is the parameter for a method. Maybe in later on classes, yeah, I, I will explain them as well. Why it is mentioned as static, why it is public like that. Okay. For now, I'm just going with the basics. So you were able to understand this um, if and else conditions, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So let's see one more this thing. If and else, we are going to check. We are going to check whether, uh, based on the condition, whether that particular so condition satisfy, we will print something. If condition is not met, we will do some other activity. So there is one more thing. Loop. We will see some something called for loop. So let's now I've created one more class for for loop. Okay, for loop. What is a for loop? We will see. Always, like I mentioned, main method is must. Main method syntax will always remain same. Okay. For now, you can just remember it this way only. We will see what it is later on. Okay. Um, so int. I will just give something. Int i is equals to 50. So let's let me give int i is equals to 5. So I want to check. So int let not me give range a range. Okay. So the, the, the program says simple program. We are going to club something if condition, if else, and for loop. Okay. I will teach you the syntax for for loop, then we will do some activity. For now, let's print something. Print numbers from 1 up to 5. So how do I print numbers from 1 to 5? I know you guys are so smart. You will write something like system.out.print1, then again system.out.print2, then system.out.print3, so on up to 5. So, okay, that is that is also possible. Yeah, you can do that harder way also, and you can print it. But we can do using this thing for loop also. How we are going to see? So now, now what we have done? So let's. So I've printed one, two, three, four, five. So suppose let's say I ask you the same question: Can you print numbers up to one to fifty thousand? Is it easy for you to do that? No, because you have to uh, copy paste so many times. So that's not a smart way of doing. So what is the better way? So we are going to use for loop. What is the syntax for for loop? Let's see.
okay in this for loop if you see we have three uh, three parameters maybe you can consider it as the first one says from where the loop is going to start the for loop is nothing but it will run for certain times and then it will come out of the loop suppose here what i have told hey start looping from zero okay first i have declared some variable i and i have assigned it to zero first we are going to mention the start from where it has to start then i have mentioned end condition so it has to end so it has to loop up to 50 times so zero up to 50 this is the end condition and this is the increment condition okay i am saying hey you have to increment i plus plus means it will increase one time the step will be one so first time it will be zero second time it will be one third time it will be two so it is incrementing by one number so to do that we are writing i plus plus so let me do that so then then what happens so what happens this far so uh, so then you can write your required condition what you want to do in every loop you have to write it here hey i just want to print the number that is all so now those the program simply looks print numbers from 1 to 50. so let's print it so let's remove all of these things so see how for loop works so initial condition start condition so this is a semicolon guys semicolon start condition end condition how much it has to increase for each condition okay so for each and every time in a loop each and every iteration we can call it as so if i put a debug point you will see it better so now it has reached the for for loop when i execute so now if you see in the first iteration the the i value is set to zero the first iteration i value has become zero and it is less than 50 is zero less than 50 yes the zero is less than 50 this condition has been satisfied so here for the first time it is not incremented for the first time okay for the first time it will be zero only now when you print uh, let me add when you print zero will get print so what is there in i so i was set to zero and this condition is matched once this execution is completed it will start incrementing so we will see zero got printed that is what i have asked it to do okay let me stop this let me put just for now five itself sorry so now hey guys so what is happening when the for loop began we are declaring a variable int i and we are assigning it to value zero and here verifying that end condition whether i is less than or equals to five yes i condition is matched here end condition is matched then what are we trying to do we are trying to increment it you can either increment or decrement so for now let's increment and we will write this program okay so then what i am asking it to do hey i just want to print so that i will get the numbers from one to five for now let's take it as one to five 
one to five alone okay first time loop as executed and one okay for, for uh, okay because i may myself has uh, given it one sorry zero that's why zero got printed first time zero will print okay now second time it has entered the loop don't think again i will be set to zero i only in the beginning of the loop it will be set to zero not for each and every iteration okay now i has been set to one i is less than five true so next condition started executing so once it is executed one got printed and now what happens i would be incremented to one more number so when you see i will be incremented to one more number and i is still less than five again the loop is happening okay this condition has met and the i has been incremented so now we are entering the loop for the third time so two has been printed okay now again it will run so again it is not going to set zero increment will happen and increment happens and now it will be set to three and the condition met it is entered now we have written a print statement the print has also happened like that it will run for the fourth time now for the fifth time it exited the loop why because here i have set five less than five this would have become something like this in the fifth iteration five less than five no five is equals to five so condition failed that is why it exited the loop okay in this case what happened it came out of loop because this condition was not met okay so increment will not happen the condition has not met the for loop will be exited i will write some completed execution okay let's print something so if you want one to five you have to do something like this starting with one less than or equals to five if you give it will run from one to five okay one and it will end with equals to five like one two three four five if you want like this the start condition is one the end condition is less than or equals to five so each step we are incrementing by one number plus plus means just one step one number we are incrementing to this particular i so so first it will for whenever it begins the i uh, i looping in the whenever the for loop begins i will be set to one then e for each iteration it will be incrementing like one then it will go to two then three four five five will also get printed then what happens sixth time this condition will fail this is a condition so it, it will not match okay six less than or equals to five it becomes and it will exit the loop after running for five times it will exit the loop let's stop it and rerun it and check if you see the value of i is one the value of i is two so now let me put it as something inch range i want range up to 50 numbers i want to print 1 to 50 i want to print i already defined it range okay i want to range is 50. so what i'm trying to do instead of writing 5 i'm writing range instead of hard coding this value to 5 or 50 I'm using a variable to save that particular value. So let me run it. So now what happened? One to 50 got printed. If I give zero here, guys, you can give zero also, nothing wrong. So it will start printing from zero to 50. The start number, we have defined it as zero. Suppose if I do something 46, 
it's still fine it will start execution it will start executing from 46 47 48 49 up to 50 so if you see here the range the first number i've defined it as 46 that is why it is done so for loop will have three segments maybe start start starting value you will define and then up to how much you have to execute then step to increment this and then here we have to write for each iteration what action has to be performed okay so now i have written this now i don't want to just print it okay i i, I know 46 47 48 49 50 i just want to know whether 46 is a even number or not how will i do that how will i do whether like you already know how to write a if condition if 46 is stored in which variable i so i will check i i've told you percentage is modulus i modulus 2 if equals to equals to 0 it means what it means the number is even The given number is even. If it is not even, it means what? The given number is odd. The number is odd. So we are doing only this much. So for now, what I'm trying to do, print numbers from 1 to 50. The range is 50 or for now, maybe 1 to 10 we will do to make our lives easy so for each and every number i'm not just printing i'm also checking within for loop if you look at this within for loop i have something called if and else also i'm checking whether the given number is even or odd as well okay so i'm printing numbers from 1 to given range is 10 1 up to 10 then incrementing by plus plus only once then i'm checking whether the number is even or odd so let's see the given number is not printed This is for aesthetics purpose. So what is happening in the next line? It is getting printed. For now, you can ignore that. So the, the value of i for the first iteration is 1. The given number is odd. OK? So one is an odd number or even number. So whenever a loop happens, whenever this execution happens, it will start from i is equals to one. So the, ra the range is 10, okay? One less than or equals to 10, true. Then increment will happen. In the first iteration, what will happen? It will go and so within for loop, these, these many statements we have, everything has to be executed for each and every iteration. Everything has to be executed earlier we were just printing it now after printing what we are trying to do we were checking even or odd as well so if the number i if it is divisible by two then the remainder should be zero then it is called even number so that's what i've told if it is not divisible by two and yielding not yielding the remainder zero then it means it is an odd number i'm just trying to print the same thing so when i run this 
let me run it up to 100 numbers save this when i run it range up to 100 so you are saying this is the output we have got 44 the given number is even 45 the given number is odd so there is a difference between print and print ln so the print ln will print in new line the print will not do go to the next line so So I will share this code with you. You guys can try it. If any questions, just ask me. Okay. So today's class ends with for loop and if loop.